Excuse me as I kiss the sky. introduce a dog things incrementally. It's called repetition. And you gotta do it while he's still young. You gotta do it when the relationship is still young from the beginning. You gotta show a man how to treat you. You do something good, give him a treat. You don't just tell him sit one time and he get it. Nah, you gotta train him into that. You gotta get him to sit, get him to understand that he'd get a treat if he sits. Then you gotta tell him when and where to sit. He'll sit and stand on cue if you do this right. You want to know what I think the treat is? What I think the number one treat is that men want? It's your poo tang, your na-na, your vajayjay, that ooh-wee, your miss madam, that mm, 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 your good stuff, your roller coaster, your swoosh, that wet wet, that water in the hole. That's the treat. That's the treat that'll make them howl every time. Y'all probably wondering why I'm naked. It's because it's hot as hell in my apartment for some reason. And I'm too cheap to cut on the goddamn on air conditioner. I say withhold the treats. Withhold the treats. Don't give him the treats immediately. He don't know you. I mean, I don't know if you want to take my advice. I'm on YouTube, butt ass naked. It's called selling your soul. You heard of it? I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I just want to be free. I'm butt ass naked on YouTube. That says a lot about my character. You know how I know what the number one treat is for men? And you wanna know how I know it's that ooh ooh? It's because there's plenty of dudes watching this video right now hoping I make a slight move and accidentally show my breasts. Lean back, lean back, just a little bit. They wait for it, they want me to lean back some more. Just a little bit so I can see a little bit of today. You don't wanna give up your treats too early. You understand what I'm saying? You don't wanna give up your treats. Your treats is your bargaining tool. And no matter how many times a man try to make you feel some kind of way, make you feel like a hoe, because he's saying he got to pay for dinner, and he might as well go pay for a prostitute. But that's what the things I need you to understand about your vagina. We all got vaginas. My vagina just as good as your vagina. Vagina just as good as my vagina. Vagina is all the same. So here's the thing that you really, really have to try to figure out gotta try to figure out how to get the guy to stay after he hit. You wanna make your treats specific to a man, you gotta get him emotionally invested in you. And you know how to get a man emotionally invested in you. That means he needs to take some time to get to know who you are without sex clouding his judgment and yours. But you know, what do I know? You know, I'm just a butt naked chick. Well, you do. My name. My back, lick my ooh and my ooh. You know what they say about those chicks that get butt naked on camera. <laughs> can't nobody tell me I can't get naked on YouTube. Can't nobody tell me that. Ooh, the wind, the ceiling fan is just oh, right there. Instead of putting him on a leash like you would a dog, you just let him roam free. You just go out with him, let him roam free, let him do whatever it is that he needs to do for him, and he'll come back. That's how dogs are. I mean, that's how men are. You know, you know where home at. Come on now. You've been giving them them treats like you're supposed to incrementally, inch by inch by inch by inch, but slowly. That's what the thing is. Y'all got to have some patience around here. God, you want a man so bad, so desperately, you can't wait. You're like, a biological clock is ticking. I'm single. All of my friends are married. I've been single for X amount of years, and all of my friends are getting married and having kids, and I'm not having any of that. 
trust me, there was a time when those people were single too. Both of them. Husband and wife was single. Your friends were single at one time, but y'all was at the club hanging together. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? It ain't three. Just saying, if you let him get to the center of the Tootsie Roll Pop with just three licks, hit it and quit it. Stick it and move it. Good luck with that. Hey, it's your girl, Miss Sansa Ray here. Did I tell you that you could give me video topic suggestions? You can go to my website, sansaray.com, and fill out the form, and it will send your video topic suggestion to me, and I will read it off in my videos. I'm in my driveway in my car. I left work early. Long story. You don't want me to tell you that story. Let's just say sometimes too much of anything can kill you. Toast to that. <laughs> I got this one video topic suggestion from looks like Nanya, like Nanya business, but I, I think that's not it. It's Nanya or Anya or it's probably Nanya, but you know what? Her email address is like Anya because it doesn't start with an N, but then she put her name with an N. And like, this is the type of stuff that confuses me. Like, you might want to put what name you want me to say in the video so I can give you your props. I don't want to be still, like saying your name wrong. And if you have a weird name like mine, mine is Salsa Ray, and that's kind of strange, you might want to put the pronunciation in the daggone like description of your video topic so I could be like oh, okay that's how you say her name but I think this person's name is Nonia but she says greetings my sister I want to know your opinion on why guys are so quick to jump into a relationship after only a few days of talking I've had this happen to me a few times in this past I have had this happen to me a few times in this past I have had this happen to me a few times in this past month. I'm not even leading them on in no way, but they seem to fall for me quickly. Can you please make a video on this? Thank you, peace and blessings. <sighs> okay, so to me, this could be a number of things. You know what I mean? Like, first of all, let me just remind you that men are completely idiotic. Women, we are the queens of the universe. We run this shit, okay? Don't let nobody else tell you that women did not invent the shit okay because we are the shit okay we're smarter faster and more logical i don't care how much they try to tell you otherwise don't listen to them girl don't listen but anyway it might depend on a number of things number one what age range are you in normally younger people under the age of 30 speed through stuff that's number one number two a lot of men say they want to be in a relationship because they want sex and they feel like if they tell a girl that they want to be in a relationship that will get them to open up to sex faster okay guys use that don't fall for it number three this person might just be lonely and want a relationship and you might just be relationship material you know what i mean have you looked at yourself lately are you wifey in disguise their biological clock could be ticking you know some men ready think about it most divorced men that are like 35 they're divorced because of their first marriage and their first marriage was when it was like 23 and it was like oh my god why did i speed through that because there are men out there that want to get married as well we're not the only ones that try to make it seem like only women want that men want that too trust me not everybody thinks marriage is a ball and chain not all marriages are about arguments and stuff like that uh-uh nigga why you ain't put the toilet seat down why well, always gotta put the toilet seat down why can't you just put the toilet seat up oh you better be quiet before i make a youtube video about you in my driveway you need to ask yourself what kind of men you're dating figure out what kind of person this person is you're not gonna figure that out the first week or two I've had some men tell me that the first time they spotted a woman they knew that they wanted that woman to be their wife then I've heard other men like nah it took me a second so it just depends on the guy you know it's, it's no general like cookie cut way for me to explain why a guy would want to do something like that it's each guy is like different you know what I mean um just keep that in mind but you, you can't treat them all the same because you might meet a guy who actually wants to be in a relationship with you that soon and wants things to work out with you pleasantly and isn't thinking so far ahead into the future they're just thinking about the moment you know and the moment might be good a lot of guys do that they don't think that hard seriously like they don't think that hard I mean really come on look at football just watch how stupid football is any sport any sport just look at it it's like what is this shit technically like really?
kick a ball around the field, make a touchdown, then do a stupid dance. That sums it up. It's not Chinese arithmetic with them. They're, they're pretty simple creatures, according to every man I know. So They're not looking at you saying, I want to be in a relationship and actually thinking about what marriage would be like 20 years from now. No, they're not thinking that far ahead. They're like, she's pretty. I want to have sex with her. You know what? I want a steady girlfriend right now. Now, let me mind you, right now may only last for 24 hours. So you have to be careful. There right now is a second in the midst of a New York minute. Just for me, so if you are that kind of man, cause I'm that kind of girl, I got a freaky secret, everybody saying cause we don't give a damn about a thing. And that's really what it was, I didn't give a damn. <laughs> I didn't care about nothing, I was gonna do me. about thinking about women articulating sexual desire. Slut shaming is so strange to me. Mm -hmm. How a woman could have the same sex a man is having, because literally she's having it with that man. So we're literally at the same time having sex together. Mm -hmm. And then when she gets up, she's this horrible person. And he's magnificent. Why do you think people feel that way about you? I don't, maybe just because I'm sexy, they assume that I'm Super. promiscuous, <laughs> you know, and um, that I just, you know, I don't know, have sex all day, and I don't, and that's no. not fair. And I yeah. just act like I'm a mom, I yeah. work, you know, like, it, it's just, it's really not fair, and I mean, we can laugh about it, but it is a very serious issue that, that us women have to deal yeah. with. The role of women in traditional African societies was particularly important. Women were the givers and nurturers of life and their bodies were valued and appreciated by the community. Nudity in African societies was not a sign of promiscuity or lack of dignity, but a practical way of living in hot climates and an expression of their spirituality. The introduction of Western society stripped Africans of dignity, pride, and humanity. Having never encountered people who looked like Africans, Europeans used ignorance and assumption to justify an agenda of obtaining free labor. African women were extremely dehumanized. Their roles in the community as divine givers and nurturers of life would be redefined as beasts who partook in animal-like reproduction. Their ability to be strong contributors to the community as well as mothers to their children would be interpreted as doubly productive in terms of labor. One disturbing example of the horror of European intrusion is Sarkey Bartman, a South African woman who in the 19th century traveled with an animal trainer in Europe to display her abnormally large buttocks. She was treated as an intriguing mammal and people paid money to see the woman turn sideshow attraction. It would be nice to think that we've come a far cry from the case of Sarkey Bartman, but many images show that we have not. Sexism exists in Western society. It has for centuries. It's existed elsewhere around the world for, for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years. So this is not to say that hip-hop is responsible for sexism or anything like that. But it is important to pay very close attention to the way that hip-hop has become not just a highly sexualized place alone, which it has become, but a space where the exploitation of black women has become almost required for artists to develop an identity, to develop a sense of status, to be a, a powerful, desirable, uh, successful black male image in hip hop, you almost have to exploit black women as part of your performance. It's not something you do on the side, you, you have to do it. It's almost a requirement. Tell me what made you decide to go I was poor as hell. I was living with my ex-boyfriend that was beating my ass. I had to drop out of school. I was like um, living with his mama, two pit bulls in a bedroom. Go dealing with domestic abuse, that's like a serious thing. There's the thing, right? You know how bitches love hitting guys? They love hitting niggas. Like, oh my gosh, 
You cheat on me, you slap them. Well, guess what? That shit gonna come back all to you. You know how these little young girls, they they so quick to move with their boyfriends. And then it's like, once you do, you gotta deal with cooking for them every day, doing things right for them every day. You might deal with getting your ass beat every day. Did anyone try to pull you out of that situation? No. How did you get out? Stripping, getting my own money and leaving. How was I gonna leave if I only made $200 every week? Ain't no way. So basically stripping saved your life. Yeah, you know what, it really did though. That's why we never play the game. A lot of people be like, oh my gosh, like they make it so negative, but like it really saved me from a lot of things. When I started stripping, you know, I went back to school. The only reason why I stopped going to school is because I met a guy. And then like, you know, um, I just got distracted, like chasing guys, like, oh my gosh, if I don't spend time with him as much, you're gonna spend time with another girl. So if you could like give advice to girls out there that are going through the same situation and they, they don't have a choice, like they dropped out of school, would you, would you recommend stripping for them? No. Because um, this is the thing, right? Before I started stripping, even though I was poor, I was very satisfied with the way I looked. I thought I had a nice face. I thought I had a nice body and everything. Until I started going to the strip club and everything, I started to feel like insecure. Like, I started to feel like I, I, won't, I don't make as much money if I don't have big boobs. Bam, I did boobs. Then I started working in hood clubs. I ain't feel like I, I don't make enough money if I don't have a big ass. When you first did that video, you know, and you have to like, you know, do that stuff, are you embarrassed or do you just oh, get I into it? Oh, I used to be, but now I just get into it. Oh, fuck it, they've seen one titty, they've seen two titties. <laughs> it is hard, I don't have a boyfriend, shit. You don't? Fucking manless. Listen, they're lining Dude. up around the corner. <laughs> you could have what you want, I'm telling you. This is what I can't get. Like, you're a really cute girl. I mean, really cute, and you have sweetness oozing off of you. To say that you were like a, you know, a hooker? No, not a hooker. <laughs> well, whatever. See, where I come from in Brooklyn, it's a such thing as the getting money girls. And that's the what? The, that's the Gabbana girls, the right. getting money girls. You know, like, we just, we some badass bitches. We just, we know how to work our shit with men that, you know, we date at that time. Right. I'm sure a lot of people have had one night stand, you know. Oh, whatever. many one night stands. Exactly. But I didn't want to have a one night stand. Right, me either, but it just sometimes turns out that way. So did you learn how to make it into a two night stand fast? Well, I mean, even my one night stands, I always got something out of it. So That's a yeah. jolly attitude. Well, most of the time. I can't say always, but most of the time. Um, I think even for my friends, it's like we knew that we had sex. But it wasn't, it was so secretive. Everything about sex was so secretive, I feel like, before that. And it was almost like when you had sex, it was like you were doing it for the man, I feel like. And it was kind of like, that's what boys wanted to do. That's what men wanted to do. But when she came out, it was like, no, this is what we want to do. And it's okay to say it now. Um, before that, it was it was not acceptable. You know, you, you're a good girl. You don't, you don't think about it. You don't want to do it. And I did think about it, and I did want to do it. And so when this came out, and then, you know, my friends are in the club, my cousin's in the club, and we're all saying it, we're all celebrating. We didn't have to be ashamed anymore. I just remember, like, two live crew, and all of them, they were so raunchy, but it was so, it was so, it was, they were so raunchy and derogatory, the way that they came at women, but what Adina did, Adina took that raunchiness that they had to say about women, and they took it back. She took control of that. And, and made it be empowering for a woman to say, hey, that is who I am, that is how I get down, and there's nothing wrong with that, because the truth is, who's not? That's how all of us got here. Like, everybody except for my mama was a freak. In our society, women, again, are perceived as being, you know, the timid ones, the passive ones, the, um, we're only sensual and sexy when men want us to be sensual and sexy. And I just refuse to fall into that category and be controlled like that. Because if guys can do it, I can do it too. And regardless of what the females thought and what the guys even thought, because, you know, guys, there were some guys that said, okay, she's a hoe, you know, she's easy, she's promiscuous. And, and it was like, no. Nah. It would, if that's your perception of me, then that's my perception of you. And, you know, I'm going to call a spade a spade. Okay, we're here with Peaches. Peaches, tell us, is it a rough life out here? It can be at times. Um, you know, we go through the, the everyday. You know.
know, uh, guys not wanting to pay when they're supposed to pay, um, not wanting to pay the amount that they're supposed to pay, um, guys paying and wanting to take the money back. Um, you know, we have a couple of rapes out here, by the grace of God, I you know, have not been a victim yet. Um, you know, we, we got all kind of acts out here, so yeah, around about, it's kind of hard, yeah. Now, you mentioned to me you just had a date while we were out here videotaping. Right, right, I did. Um, it was a $20 jack-off. Um, he's fairly quick. He's a regular on mine. I have a lot of those because, like I said, this is my block. Um, I have a lot of regulars, so I try to stay away from the new guys since we have an undercover beef going on. But at any rate, yeah, um, normally my prices are 30 for head, 40 for sex, 60 for both. And I get special days, too. Meaning, if it's hot as hell out here, you'll get the special, which is $20 head, I catch no mess. Or you get 30 for sex only, or 40 for both. And that meaning head and pussy for both. So, um, rarely do I do specials. Let's clear that up. Um, right now, this is not a special day because it's tolerable heat out here, mm -hmm. the wind is blowing. So, people are stuck with the 60 for both, or let me out. <laughs> Tell me. What does the future hold for you? Do you want to stay out here on the oh, streets? Oh, hell to the no. Um, what I see my future as is sequels to this show, which is Diaries of a Ho. You're doing a, a, a documentary. Yes, me and my roommate, Kayla. Um, we have a, uh, something that we're recording on our phone, a reality of us being out here. It's called Diary of a Ho. And what we plan to do is get a couple of pieces of this and a couple of pieces of the middle and the ending. And to show you what we went through, where we came from, and where we're at now, pretty mm -hmm. much. And um, it starts here, from the bottom, in real life. Do you ultimately want it to help other young women out there? That is the ulterior goal. That is the, that is the goal. And to let them know that there are other options. Um, and this doesn't have to be the end. You know, don't get it twisted. We got retired hoes. You know, we got females that just thought home was the thing to do. You know, and they still do it at their 50 and 60 year old age. However, you know, uh, clearly they're not on the block doing it, <laughs> you know, but to let the females know, the young women, all ages, females know that me at 31, been doing this since I was about 13. So we're looking at what, 25, 26 years maybe? You know, um, it's, it's hard, but if you're going to do it, do it well and be careful doing it and. When you, it's time to move and do another objective, do the other objective. It's interesting because women of color, especially um, sisters, there is, um, we're, it's so funny because our videos portray us as very loose and um, we're a very prude race. Contrary to popular belief, we're very prude. And we tend to judge ourselves. Our race tends to, which we, um, which I learned is colorism, where we have problems with, within our, our race. We tend to judge each other a lot harsher um, with the way we wear our hair, our skin color, um, the way we talk, and so on and so forth. We become very judgmental to whereas I believe um, white folk or Caucasian, whatever word you want to use, they're a lot more lenient. They allow themselves to be a lot more free. And when you look at the Sharon Stones and you look at the Madonnas and you look at the Iggy Azaleas and whomever else is out there currently, it's easier for them to just kind of be free. And they're a little harsh on my girl Miley Cyrus, but um, they're still, it's still accepted more than with us. And it's very strange to me why that is, but I just noticed that there's a certain standard that we are held to than they are. I'm amazing, so much so that you want to have sex with me. So here I am. And I give you the privilege of being with me and you give me the honor of being with you. And then we do this thing together and now I'm dirty. And then I go along my life and I do this with other men because that's what people do. You have sex with people 
as you're trying to figure out what you want, what kind of man you want, what kind of sex you want, what kind of lifestyle do you want, what kind of penis do you want? Do you want uncircumcised penis or circumcised penis? Do you want black penises or white penises, Asian penises or what do you want? And you gotta figure all these things out. And meanwhile, while the woman is doing all this figuring, the men are doing the same exact figuring because the men she's having sex with are also trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then when you find what you want, then you settle in and you say, okay, found what I want. But except that at the end, that woman's disgusting. But all she did was have sex with men. So then my question is, and we're just talking heterosex here. We don't want to get into everything else right now, this is whatever. But speaking from experience and looking, I'm saying, okay, so men are telling me that other men are disgusting. So what you're saying to me is that if I have sex with you and people like you, it lessens my worth. Versus saying, if you have sex with me, you're a better person. Now you shine brighter. Now you're a queen, you've been touched by a king. Go about your life. Why don't men think more highly of themselves that so that when women come in contact with them, they see her now as being better off for being for having had that contact. Why is it that you don't see yourself as gods on earth and that when you give the woman the privilege of, of sharing in your life in the most intimate way, she has now been blessed? Why is it that when she gives you that and you give her what you give her, you have dirtied her? And I think about how many men are, and I've seen it in comments and things, men say, and they've been being told for so long that they're dogs. And men have been being told for so long that they're no good and they're deadbeats and you don't make enough money and nah, 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 nah. And so you start to feel bad about yourself so that now you come in contact with a woman and you feel like this dog has fucked her. And now she's not worthy. It was like I was talking to an uh, imbecile. It was like I was talking to somebody that was retarded. <laughs> she could not formulate sentences. Do you know this chick that's on uh, 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 a Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, that Jocelyn chick? Yeah. Her speech was worse than hers. And she's not Puerto Rican, by the way. <laughs> not, and, and, and I've got to keep saying, hold on, wait a minute, what did you say? You know, I'm, I'm getting upset because I want to, like, can you talk fucking English? But she don't, she just don't know how to talk. And then number two, she comes to the car. She's a cute girl, nice body, fucking hair all over her head. I said, baby, I said, oh, I said, wait a minute. I said, why didn't you comb your hair? She says, oh, I did. I said, you what? I said, you combed your hair? She says, yes. I said, sweetheart, I took my, my visor, I pulled my visor down and flipped the mirror up. I said, look at your hair. I said, are you sure that you combed that? And she looked in the mirror. She says, yeah, I combed it before I came outside. And I, and, I, and I got my hand on my forehead shaking my head like, what the fuck? So, and, wait, oh. wait, wait, wait. So she came outside with a Walmart bag, no purse. Her shit in a Walmart bag, and she ain't have her hair done. Why didn't you just <laughs> stop the because date right there? I felt sorry for. I, I, I felt sorry for. You know what I mean? And the girl had nothing going on. She 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 didn't, she didn't work. She wasn't in school. She didn't have no high school diploma. You know what I'm saying? This girl, twenty nine fucking years old. You twenty nine years old, and you ain't got. No GED, you ain't got no high school diploma, you ain't in school, you ain't got nothing. And she ain't had no car. And she ain't had no car. No and job. Really, and technically, she was homeless because when I picked her up, that was at her grandmother's house. Wow. So I was like, well, where do you live? She was like, well, 
Um, sometimes I stay with my grandmother. I say, no, where do you live? Mm-hmm. Well, I had an apartment, but I lost it. So I'm like, I can't, you know, I didn't, I didn't bring, I didn't, I wasn't nasty to her. But I said, look, I said, you, it's, it's a lot going on with me. And I said, to be perfectly honest with you, I said, I don't think that we would be a good mess for one another. And she was like, yeah, but I can come to your house and I'll clean your house from bo- from top to bottom. And, and, and I was like, look, first of all, I don't even know you like that. And I'm not going to leave you in my house to do that. You know, not saying that you're a thief or nothing. I said, but, you know, I'm, I don't feel comfortable with that. You know what I'm saying? And I believe you. I believe that you will clean my house from top to bottom. So the bottom line is that the girl was looking for for some place to live. She she was looking for a haven. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what she was looking for. She was looking for somebody to take care of her and her son. She has a two-year-old son. Okay. And she don't have nowhere to live. She looking for a daddy. Not, and it was not going to be over here. What? So what happened with the other girl? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now, this chick did have a car. She even worked. Right? <laughs> comes over here. She comes over here. Straight up fucking hood. Straight up fucking ghetto. We get over here. Number one, she didn't want to take her shoes off. She saw me take my shoes off. Um, I'm not taking my shoes off. I'm like, excuse me? She was like, um, I'm not taking my shoes off. I said, baby, if your feet dirty, I have plenty of washcloths. You can go in the bathroom. You can wash your feet. I even have clean socks straight out the bag that you can put on your feet. No, mm-mm, no, thank you. I said, okay. I went on about I said, okay, forget it. I said, I keep the shoes on. We sit down. She, she saw some DVDs that was on the bottom of my, my TV. I got a 65-inch flat screen in my living room. And and she went up under and she saw uh, a Godfather DVD. Oh my God, the Godfather! I wanna, I wanna see this movie so bad. Can I take this home? I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know you like that. I said, and I don't really like loaning my DVDs out because when I loan my DVDs out, I never get them back. Right. Now keep that in the back of your mind about what I said about the DVD. Now, we, keeping in mind, we went out on a date before we came here. So we had already ate. Now, from the time we left Olive Garden, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't Olive Garden, it was Red Lobster. From the time we left Olive, I mean, I don't know why I keep thinking Olive Garden, Red Lobster, to the time we got here, it was, uh, I'm going to say maybe an hour. We sat here for maybe 10, 15 minutes. Um, I'm hungry. Uh, what? <laughs> we just ate at Red Lobster an hour ago. Yeah, I know, but I'm still hungry. Can you order something? I said, okay. I said, what do you want me to order? I went into the kitchen, pulled my drawer out, pulled my little brochures out. She going through them. She says, what about a pizza? I said, okay. I called Pizza Hut. Gives her the phone. I go use the bathroom. I come back. Half an hour, 45 minutes later, Pizza Hut man knocks on the door. I go to the door. The man says $35. I said, $35 for what? This chick then ordered a damn large pizza with all these fucking toppings on it. A liter soda some damn wings, 20-something wings, <laughs> and some type of damn cheese, some type of damn cheese, um, I mean, not cheese, cinnamon, some type of, of damn cinnamon sticks, dessert <laughs> sticks, for $35. So I went on paid the guy, got the stuff in, you know, she eating and everything. This, I'm not lying on this woman. This woman... Belches right the fuck out in this bra. I said, uh, wow. Um, I'll wait for 
for her to say excuse me. Chick says, don't say excuse me. I'm not there. Jumps up, goes in the bathroom, blows my bathroom out, comes out, belly hanging all out, <laughs> then halfway unzipped. I said, baby, could you, you should at least spray when, you know, spray while you was in there. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see any spray. I said, baby, it's right there beside the toilet. Um, uh, she was like, oh, I just need to lie. I just need to lay down. She laid down on the couch. I said, look, it's getting late. Uh, I, I, need to, I need to go ahead on and turn in. It's really getting late. So just go ahead on and lay down. And, and, and I just want to lay here for a little while and get myself together. Now, after that, Oh, by the way, do you have anything in here to drink? I was like, uh, what would you like to drink? Um, some kind of alcohol beverage. I said, I said, man, I gotta get this woman out of here. I said, I got some Ciroc and I got some, uh, uh, some Belvedere gin. Which one do you want? She says, oh, the Belvedere gin sounds good. <laughs> Okay. I says, okay, <laughs> you want to get that? Because, you know, I don't know how much you want or, you know, you know, she goes, she goes in the kitchen, she gets a little bell with dear, pours a little drink, comes back out, <sighs> sits the drink down on my table, I said, baby, um, you need to put a coaster up under that because you're going to mess my wood up. You know, that's cherry wood. I can't have you messing my stuff up this night. Oh, um, it's just a table. I say, sweetheart, it's my table. Can you please get one of those coasters from over there off the counter, please? She gets a coaster. She goes over there. She's drinking. You know what I'm saying? And I just want her out. I say, I'm going to go lay down for a minute. You know what I mean? So I go to the bedroom, I go lay down. So about a half an hour later, she I comes back out. She's in here looking at a, a movie on, I think, HBO or some, some movie she was looking at. So I went on and let her finish the movie. And she basically, you know, got up. She's laying down on the couch with her feet hanging off of the couch. I said, baby, that's why I wanted you to take your shoes off. You could have been able to lay back and relax on the couch instead of having your body hanging off the couch like that. <laughs> this is too that much. chick leaves my house and steals my damn um, Godfather DVD and my damn, um, uh, um, I don't know why I want to say Cisco, and my damn Swap from out of my damn cabinet in my kitchen. <laughs> This is what you've been dealing with. <laughs> I said, I said, baby, you took my DVD? She was like, what? What, what are you talking about? I said, sweetheart, the Godfather DVD that was under my TV that I told you that you could not, that you could not borrow? Oh, oh, wow. I don't believe this. You accusing me of taking a DVD from your home? Who does that? I was like, sweetheart. I am in my living room. I do not see my DVD. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you need to check good, sweetheart. You need to check real good because you're going to owe me an apology and I don't know if I'm going to accept it. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I said, you know what? Just for the sake of it, I'm going to look through these DVDs. Hold on. Put the speaker there. I put the long speaker phone. Set the phone down. Going through the DVDs. And this is what pissed me off. I said, sweetheart, my DVD's not here, okay? And the only person that was in here was you. Oh, well, since you tripping off a DVD, I'm going to go and buy you a Godfather D DVD because I don't like nobody accusing me of stealing uh, out of their house. I said, okay. If you know that you didn't take the DVD, why would you even volunteer to go and buy me a DVD? 
Exactly. You know, if you know you didn't take the DVD, because I don't like nobody accused. I said, sweetheart, I don't care how many times I accuse you. If you know, if you know you didn't take the DVD, why would you volunteer to buy me one? So she was silent. She wouldn't say nothing. Mm. So I didn't find out that the that the Ciroc was missing until a couple of days later. So one of my coworkers had came by, he was like, man, what you got in there to drink? I said, some sweet bell with there, some Ciroc in there. So he goes in the cabin and he was like, ain't no Ciroc in here. I said, what do you mean, ain't no Ciroc in here? He's like, ain't no Ciroc in here. I said, man, are you serious? He said, bro, I'm looking in here, ain't no Ciroc in here. So I goes in the kitchen, I looks in the cabin, I'm moving the cereal out the way, I'm moving everything out the way. I said, I be damn. And I'm looking all through all of the other cabinets, seeing if this chick didn't put the Ciroc someplace else. This chick took the Ciroc out of the cabinet, put it in her purse with the DVD, and walked out of my damn apartment. That is crazy. Lena, I can't even think of her last name. Her first name is Lena. She lived over there off of Northside Drive. <laughs> Lena. I can't even think. Of, I don't even want to. I don't even want to think of her last name. That, that is so is fucking hell. With a car, she had a car. Had, had, had a job. They came over here and did that ghetto ass shit. That is crazy. <laughs> Everybody I told that story to said, man, you making that stuff up. I couldn't make that shit up if I wanted to. <laughs> That's what I'm like. He got to be making this up. He got to be making this up. Wish I, I wish I was making it up. I had met this chick right around the corner at Wet Willie's. Because, you know, my apartment is right off Sydney Marcus. I can drive to Wet Willie's in two, three minutes. Mm-hmm. So I go around the corner of Wet Willies. I was bored one night. I said, let me go around the Wet Willies. I go around the Wet Willies. I'm sitting at a table. Chick came over. How you doing? I said, I'm doing all right. I'm, you know, chick, I'm just chilling. Can I have one? I was eating some wings. I said, sure. She was like, um, what's your name? And, you know, we just started talking. She was in there with a couple of her girlfriends. I said, well, what you and your girlfriend's going to do after y'all leave out of here? She said, do we go in the encore next door? You want to go with us? I said, I don't know. Let me think about that. So I thought about it for a little while. So I said, yeah, I'll go over there with y'all. So we went next door to encore. And uh, we went in. I think we was in there for like, mm, maybe like, I don't know. I want to say an hour. So they was like, well, what you getting ready to do? I said, well, I'm getting ready to go around the corner, back around the corner to the crib. She was like, around the corner? I was like, yeah, I live around the corner off Sydney Marcus and Arbor Gates and Buckhead. She was like, oh, she was like, baby, let me talk to my girls. You know, maybe we can come around there and hang out with you if you don't mind. I was like, no, I don't mind. Y'all come over and chill. So he gets over here. I turn on some music, give him a few drinks. You know what I'm saying? This chick asks me, goes in my bedroom and asks me, um, I need my rent paid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Stop the rate. This how bold she was. She was straight to the point. Look, um, I need my rent paid and Whatever you need me to do, I'll do it if you pay my rent. So just out of curiosity, you know, nigga gonna ask, you know, how much is your rent? Well, my rent is $900. I say, uh, where do you live, sweetheart? And she lived in Noah Crows over in Gwinnett, off of, uh, off over by Jimmy Carter, not too far from Papa Doe's. Over there by Holcomb Bridge Road. Yeah, that Papa Do's we went to? Yeah, on mm-hmm. um, Jimmy Carter. You know, I work right down the street from there. So, uh, I said, what's the name of the apartment? She told me the name of the apartment. I said, oh, I know where those at. I said, no, I'm Holcomb Bridge Road. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly where that is. So I 
goals. I said, well, look, hold on for a minute. Let me, let me um, take care of something. I'll be out there. I got my, my, my iPad, went on to the website, to the apartments where she said she lived at, pulled the apartments up, went into the leasing information to see how much the apartment was. The apartment was started off at, I think it was 550 or something like that. Mm-hmm. So right there, the nine hundred dollars is a damn lot. So make a long story short, I called her back in the bedroom. I said, "But well, damn, baby girl, I say, damn, you trying to start a relationship off, trying to start a friendship off, telling lies. Tell me you live this such and such, such and such, and the rent over there was nine hundred dollars. You know, I said, shit, I said, uh, I did some checking. I rent over there ain't no nine hundred dollars." She was like, well, since um, I got to review everything, it's actually the rent and the utilities. I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, well, guess what? I said, I said, baby, uh, I said, you know, the most I could probably give you is probably about $200. $200? What the fuck am I going to do with $200? I need $900. I said, oh, I said, oh, okay, I see where this is coming from. You seen me pull up in the bins and you came over to talk to me because you was looking at me as paying your rent. You just seen me like a meal ticket, right, basically. Let's keep it real. She was like, well, I just know I need my rent paid. I was like, well, look, check this out. I got $200. You're going to have to fuck probably four or five other people to get the rest of your money. That's all I got for you. Now, wow. would you, uh, really? Uh-uh, I'm, we are out of here. Come on, y'all, let's go, let's go. She goes out in the living room, she ushering her little girlfriends up, you know what I'm saying? And the girlfriends ask her, what's wrong? You know, what's wrong, what's wrong? I mean, let us finish our drink, girl, you tripping. What is wrong with you? Because it was something, I think, matter of fact, I think it, I think, um, they was looking at, uh, Basketball, it was basket. it was one of those VH1 shows. It was either Basketball Wives or Hollywood Wives or one of them shows. Okay. And they were sipping on their little drinks. So they was like, girl, you need to calm down. You tripping. Let us finish our drinks and, 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 and everything. So she was like, well, do you think you could do 400? I said, baby, did you hear what I said? I said, I got $200 for you. That's all. Well, I mean, what is it that you don't understand? I got $200. Wow. That's it. That's all I got. I can't, I don't, I can't pull nothing out of the sky that I don't have. Man, I'm willing, you know, I'm willing to give you that. You know what I mean? Guess what this chick asked me? <laughs> well, um, if you give me, um, $200, um, can I just give you some head? I said, look, I don't even like head. I said, look, I don't even like head. I said, if I give you two hundred dollars, I'm fucking you, and you can keep your head because I don't even like head. That's what this crazy ass bitch asks me. Well, and and I and and, and I wish I was making this up. Well, since you don't like here, can you give me some? I said, get your ass out of my apartment. I said, get your fucking ass out of my apartment right now. I said, you have lost your fucking mind. I said, you have lost your fucking mind. You need to stop meeting these women up off the street, Marvin. I'm telling you. I was like, what in the world, girl? What in the world? I told you, turn that money down a thousand notches because you're going to meet some crazy woman because of that. I told you that. You think I'm going to give you $200 to eat your pussy? Are you crazy? Are you fucking crazy? And she was dead fucking serious. Because niggas she do like, that. Well, can you give me some head then? If you don't want the head, can you give it to me? I said, so let me make sure you understand this. You want me to give you $200 to eat your pussy and I'm not going to fuck. She was like, shoot. I said, niggas out here will do it. I said, well, guess what? 
Go get you a nigga that's, that's going to do that then. Because I'm not from down here. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I said, I'm not doing that. ATL is a trip. So one of her little girlfriends that was with her had the audacity to try to talk to me. I was like, I'm good, sweetheart. I'm good. Wow. I'm good. If you need to talk, you know, you can call me and... I'm like, man, I don't want to have nothing to do with none of you crazy motherfuckers. <laughs>